You want to take your company growth to the next level. You know that it's marketing that's going to get there and you're ready to invest. But the question is, do you build an in-house team? Do you use an agency or do you do a bit of both? You've probably got three questions. Which is going to get me there fastest? which is better value and which is the least stressful. Well, at Exposure Ninja, we've worked with hundreds of clients, both as their agency and also with their in-house teams. And in this video, we're gonna help you navigate the minefield of agency versus in-house. It's the in-house agency showdown. Okay, so how do you know when you're ready to hire an agency? You might be expecting me as an agency owner to say, it's always a good time to hire an agency. The best time to hire an agency was yesterday. The second best time is today. Not so. Hiring an agency too early can actually be really damaging, as can hiring an agency when you don't have some key roles handled by somebody in-house. That can be really inefficient. Now, we've noticed that it's a really good idea to have a proven product or service with proven demand before you hire an agency. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have made loads of sales, but it has to mean that other people selling a similar sort of thing or selling to a similar sort of audience should have got some traction. And you look at them and think, ah, do you know what? We've actually got a reason that we can compete with them. The best agency in the world will not be able to sell a bad product or service or something that people don't want. Trust me, we've tried. You also need to have the budget to invest. Hiring an agency for three months and hoping that they make your business multi-million turnover is rarely going to get traction and every single one of the clients that we've got awards for blown up ridiculous case study results these are businesses that we've worked with well over a year so you need to be willing to commit okay let's talk about some of the mistakes people make when they're hiring an agency the first mistake is to think that when you hire an agency everything's just going to happen sort of automatically without you it rarely does. It can. I've seen it a few times, but rarely it does. Let me explain. So we've had a long-term legal client that we almost never heard from, right? They wouldn't turn up to calls. They wouldn't email us. We couldn't get them to approve anything. But they basically said, we're too busy. Here's our website. Have access. Auto approval on anything. Just go and do your stuff. And we did. We massively increased their visibility and we got them more leads than they can handle, which was part of the reason why they were too busy to talk to us. But we've also had clients that we've never heard from, but they do want to approve everything. And that doesn't work. We'd be sending them stuff to approve, stuff to implement on their website and nothing. Radio silence. Obviously, that's never going to work because you only get results from actually implementing stuff, not from just having loads of Google Docs of unapproved amazing content. So businesses either need to commit the time to working with their agency or just leave them to do their thing. And by the way, I'm not talking about spending hours and hours every day with your agency here. But if you can't find like 30 minutes to an hour per week to work with your agency on approvals, on running through things with them, then either you need to trust them to get on to doing their thing or you need to think, am I really ready to invest yet? All right, so let's talk about building an in-house team. How do you know when you're ready? Well, I would suggest that until a particular marketing channel and an approach is proven, it doesn't really make sense to take the risk on building out an in-house team. Here's what I mean. Let's imagine that you've been running pay-per-click with an agency on Google, say, and it's always been hovering around break-even. Well, you might think, hmm, if we had somebody working in-house full-time on this, we might be able to improve the performance of this channel. Well, maybe you can, but actually maybe you might find that you couldn't at all. And if you couldn't, what do you do then? You've then got someone full-time on the payroll, high fixed cost, and you can't switch approach. You can't just switch them out for someone else like you could with an agency, you could say, well, can I just work with someone else in the agency? Or you could switch agencies to find an approach that works. Once you've got that person in-house, you're kind of committed to them, which is why it makes sense to make sure a channel is proven and the approach that you take on that channel is proven first. So the more sensible approach to take would be to keep exploring that channel with an agency or move to a different agency until you have a profitable approach that you can take. Then consider in-housing if it makes sense from all the other reasons which we'll talk about later. Another common mistake can be committing too much resource to a particular channel. So let's say for example that you work with an agency like Exposure Ninja on email marketing and in the first few months of our work together we build loads of automations and these automations are really amazing. They produce amazing results for the business. We've got like basket abandonment, checkout abandonment, retargeting sequences we've got automatic review follow-ups we've got uh, repurchase sequences and all this stuff and you see this all working and it generates really strong ROI and you think great let's take this to another level let's bring someone in-house to focus just on our email marketing 
because then we can build broadcasts, we can do lots of weekly emails and we'll get significantly better results. The problem is the ROI on those additional tasks is usually way lower than on the automations, which are basically set and forget and require very little ongoing management. But the company now has a long-term fixed cost running that and can't redeploy that resource elsewhere because it's an email specialist. So when you're building an in-house team, you really wanna know exactly what they're going to be doing and the approach that they're gonna be taking. And you want to know that throwing much more hours at it is gonna produce dramatically better results than what you're getting with an agency. Of course, key to all of this stuff is having enough business coming in that you can invest in agencies or in-house teams. We have a free service designed to help people who are looking to scale their digital marketing. It's called the free website and marketing review. You can get it from ExposureNinja.com. We'll take a look at all of your digital marketing to date and help you plot a route through the next 12 months to help you scale the volume of leads and sales that you're getting. It's a completely free service, totally no obligation, and it is amazing. So go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to request yours today, like now. Okay, let's talk about the mistakes people make with building their in-house team. The first mistake relates to unicorns. Let me explain. Almost every business today is competing in every single one of their digital marketing channels with channel experts in their competitors, right? Channel specialists. For example, 10 years ago, half the ads on Google were written by semi-clueless or fully clueless business owners or amateurs just having a go. You could have a pretty good crack at Google ads and you could get some decent results. Fast forward to today, completely different beast. The competition level in a channel like that means that a semi-clueless business owner having a crack at Google ads is first step in financial ruin. Now we've hired hundreds of digital marketing specialists over the last 10 years, and we've noticed that the range of specialists and their field of expertise has actually shrunk over that time. For example, back in 2014, I would have had a go at building some Google ads, running ads on Facebook. I would have done technical SEO. I would have written content. I even used to build websites. I built Exposure Ninja's first website myself. Fast forward to today, all of those areas are way more competitive. Because I don't spend my entire life working in any one of these channels, my level of knowledge has been far surpassed by our specialists in Exposure Ninja. They eat me alive. So let's imagine that we're running an SEO content marketing campaign for a client with pay-per-click in a couple of channels. Well, the team that we would put together to work on that would be a technical SEO, a content writer, someone from editorial. We'd have a PPC strategist on each channel. We'd have PPC teams on each channel. We'd have a designer for the ads. Then we'd have a project manager joining them all together. That's a team of 10 specialists covering SEO, content marketing, and pay-per-click. But what typically happens is an outsider business owner will say, hey, I'm paying an agency like the equivalent of three full-time people. Why don't I just hire three full-time people to do that work? not realizing that those three to full-time people will have to be unicorns to be able to take on the work of those 10 specialists. So when you have a proven approach in a proven channel that you know you're gonna be committing to long-term and you have the time and resource to do more people management, you might start building out an in-house team, but you're not gonna require unicorns to do it. You're gonna think accurately about the number of specialists required to genuinely compete in that channel. Which brings us nicely to the next mistake that businesses make when they start to build out their in-house team, which is overestimating the cost savings. Because whilst an agency might charge 10 to 20K a month to run these services, actually by the time you've recruited these people, trained them up, got them onboarded, allocated resource to managing them, you've thought about paying for their benefits, their pensions, their maternity, paternity leave, often the cost savings have been eroded. Now that's not to say that building an in-house team doesn't make sense, absolutely it can, if there's sufficient headroom in that channel that throwing significantly more hours at it can yield much higher returns. So it's all about how heavily utilized these people are gonna be once you get them into the company. But obviously this decision is much more than a cost saving decision. This is about how much energy you want to contribute to a particular channel and whether there is headroom there to grow the results significantly. So to summarize, when you're thinking about building an in-house team, think carefully about the in-house roles that you're actually gonna need. Remember, don't require unicorns. Total up all the salary costs, including management time, benefits, and contribution to overhead, then compare these costs to agency fees and consider in-housing if either the cost savings are very significant or the growth potential is massive if you were to allocate more time and energy into these channels. One of the most important digital marketing tasks you can do is actually creating your buyer personas. These are absolutely crucial to have if you're going to get the most out of any in-house team or out of any agency. In this video, we show you exactly how to do it step by step. 